All right. Well, the Disability Royal Commission has heard that around 70% of school suspensions involve students with some form of learning disorder or disability. Now there are moves in some states to reduce the amount of time kids are kept out of class. I spoke to two boys who know the current system firsthand. It felt like I just wanted to punch myself in the face. I thought, why can't I just be like everyone else? Why am I not normal? Liam is 13. He has ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I just lay on my bed and cry because I was wondering what was wrong with me. In his last two years at primary school, Liam was frequently sent home early. When my dad would pick me up, I would run straight to him and hug him and say, I'm sorry. I didn't want to embarrass them. His parents had told the teachers what to expect. I explained to them that he was a very anxious child and that he needed certain adjustments to be made for him in the classroom so that he could access learning. Unfortunately, I was met with, we don't know what you're talking about. He's absolutely fine. And we don't think he has ADHD, really, and, you know, it's, it's not a problem. You know, Liam looks like every other kid, pretty much. It's like an invisible disability. So when did things start to change at school? At the end of Year 5, we started seeing issues for him. He then became really um, emotional and started having kind of the meltdowns and things like that in class and becoming disruptive and essentially in the end quite abusive because he just didn't know what else to do and he you know they didn't know what to do to help him this entire thing was going to be cut out a lot nine-year-old harry has adhd and autism it's going to be a lot of cuts in this he's been suspended from school three times do you miss your old school oh no 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 i miss none of that why is that horrible school Harry's parents tell much the same story. They sent the school medical reports and also advice on items that would help him. Can you do that yourself? So noise cancelling headphones might be of use or a wobble stool. He might need a computer as opposed to writing and we were, we were happy to fund any of those things. And so how many of those suggestions did the school adopt? None. You will have about 7% of students who are diagnosed with ADHD. That's about two in every classroom. But generally speaking, you are looking at about 20% of students who have, I guess, lower level disabilities, if you like. Even though they're described as having lower level disabilities, that kid can absolutely derail a classroom. So teachers can often find them very, very difficult to teach. When Harry got into a fight at school, he was suspended mm -hmm. and his parents were summoned yeah. to a resolution meeting. So, yeah. And then the school was saying, that we know what we're doing, you need to be on board with us. If you don't agree with our terms, we can extend the suspension definitely, if you like. <laughs> and basically me and Gary were just told we need to go on a Parenting 101 course and that we need to set boundaries. Meanwhile, both boys were struggling. It was horrendous. I mean, I picked him up and he was just absolutely sobbing. The, I could see the office staff were kind of looking like, what's going on here? And he's saying to me, I don't want to be here anymore. He, he did say that to me a number of times. For Harry, the suspensions continued, the final one lasting three weeks. Did you think any of the suspensions were fair? Mm, no. Suspensions are used as infrequently as possible. Andrew Pierpoint from the Australian Secondary Principals Association would not talk about specific cases, but says that suspensions give all sides a break. But most importantly, it gives the school an opportunity during that time to put together a program by which that student can come back to school and successfully commence school again. There are other things that we could be doing that are supportive, things like restorative justice. So for example, if one child hits another child, they're going to learn more if they are required to sit and speak and apologise to the child that they've hit, rather than, for example, if they're sent home and they get to play Xbox for the day. We were told that they needed to reintegrate him into the school. Unbeknownst to us, that was in a little room for two hours a day, he was only allowed to attend. We didn't know it wasn't with the rest of the class. And that's when he started coming home, even more hysterical sayings, he doesn't want to live anymore, he's suicidal. And then open the back door upstairs okay, and sleep me out! Please. Okay, sweetheart, you suck. 
sight. <laughs> your sight, sweetie. At that point, he was actually really having meltdowns here every night, crying every night. He even held a knife up to his throat, saying, I don't want to live anymore. Um, so at that point, I said, this is a toxic environment, and I'm taking him out of there. How do you see his future? We've seen the research, the school to prison pipeline, and this, the effect on his self-esteem, his self-worth, and his mental health. I could see that going down a really poor trajectory, which is why I pulled him out. So it's SE that makes the sound Z. Harry's mum gave okay, up her job as an intensive in. care nurse to homeschool him. So we're going to write Y's. And is now no. working weekends. Good job. High five. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a director, a writer, an actor, a music composer. Basically do everything on a movie. Acting. It's enjoyable seeing how he has progressed over the last year and how he's returning to be the happy boy he was when he started kindy. They're terrible parents. <laughs> you don't believe that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so Liam, how is high school going? It's a lot better than what I thought. I've got nice teachers. They understand about me and I'm doing better at focusing. So what was the magic ingredient? The difference with the new school is that they had a plan in place and um, it was immediately apparent that they were going to be inclusive. It's the way they are positive to him. They want him to do well and they tell him that, that he's doing well even if he's not. So we've got to stop shunning them and suspending them and making them feel this big and we have to build them up. And it's, it's been shown now in practice that the more we do that, that the more they feel part of our world and can contribute to society in a positive way. Mm. I want people to know that no matter what you're going through, things will get better. There are people who want to help you and you just need to find the right place. It's fabulous that this has ended well for those kids, but I, you think back over the years, undiagnosed troublemakers in the classroom, yeah. mm. uh, there would have been so much of that. It's even more frustrating to think that it's going on now when we do have the diagnoses and we should be able to be ahead of it rather than playing catch up uh, like they had to at the start. Yeah, there's still some work to be done there, that's for sure. And if this story has raised any issues for you, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14.